those type of people might feel so uncomfortable because they are not the professionals in the negotiation. He's the professional. And they might go, I'm just not interested in coins. I'm not interested in bullying. I'm not interested in going back to the shop. Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to lose a coin collector as a client in 60 seconds. Let's get this video started. So one might be asking themselves, right? Uh, you go to a coin show or you go to the store, for example, and so say your mom or your girlfriend or your wife wants you to go pick something up. Go pick up some mayonnaise, go pick up some Bush's beans. We're not sponsored by any of these people, but you know, hey, maybe one day, right? So you go to the store and you're, you're reaching to grab for it, right? Right out of the shelf. And someone pulls it back and they go, they come out of the shelf and they go, what's your offer for this? What's your offer, right? And, and the question would be for me, right? So this is kind of where we're trending with the coin area and why you're going to lose a client if you do this, is that I'm the buyer and you are the business. You want to sell stuff. You want to make money. If you're going to include an extra step for somebody when you're selling a coin or selling a product, sometimes they might just say it's not worth the trouble. And so uh, what I would kind of correlate with this is that we tried to buy a coin this week from somebody for our personal collection. And we were very interested. We asked them what the price is, and uh, they said, well, what's your offer, okay? And so right when you're in that area, there's two different things that could happen. You give them a, an offer they don't want, or an offer they can't refuse, or you give them an offer so they can go use your offer to barter with somebody else and get a higher price. So right when someone asks that question, it instantly puts the, the buyer in a box where people feel like, they're trying to be taken advantage of, or they're trying to be, you know, if, like I said, if you're selling a coin, if you're selling a product, have a price on it, because the person doesn't know how to answer it sometimes. But we're both coin dealers when we were talking, so we're both in the game. I offer him something that's a little bit above retail at 350 for this coin. And his response was, pass thanks, pass thanks, pass thanks. That's all, no counter offer, no what he wanted for the coin, not even a response of any type of being cordial or anything like that. And so uh, for me, that really turned me off as someone that wanted to buy from him. But also the question really led to if he is selling coins, selling gold and all that stuff, and someone that comes into a shop doesn't necessarily know coins, doesn't necessarily know gold, but they want to get into it. And he instantly comes up with this, what would you offer me? Or what, what, what would make me happy? Give me an offer that would make me happy. Those type of people might feel so uncomfortable because they are not the professionals in the negotiation. He's the professional. And they might go, I'm just not interested in coins. I'm not interested in bullying. I'm not interested in coming back to the shop. And there's a lot of things that can stem from this. And this is something that I've really gotten an issue with it over time. And so uh, if you want to lose a client in 60 seconds, do what he did. I'm not going after his business. I'm not going to say who he is or what he does or where he lives, nothing like that. I'm just saying it's a problem in the coin space. If you're selling a product, put a price on it. Every other place does it. Go on a website, buy, you buy detergent, go on a website, you buy anything that you want. It's gonna have a price or it's gonna be for auction. And so stick to that if you're gonna wanna be a coin dealer because people want to buy something from you. They don't wanna go through the hassle of back and forths. And so we're gonna make a little bit of a pivot here we just uploaded uh, the TNA recap, our first ever episode of the Freedom Coin Show. If you guys want to check that out, we have a link down in the description below. Basically spending about 50 minutes talking about uh, the market. Do we think it's strong? Do we think it's weak? Uh, we talked about is TNA worth it for you if you want to set up as a table? Is the public strong? And uh, show security. So a lot of cool things in that episode. We hope you guys enjoy that. Well, let's continue with this video. All right, so guys, we got a wide assortment this week. Me and Casey uh, went to just a few places around town. Also talked with a, a few kind of cool guys. Uh, we've been working pretty hard at trying to find some great inventory for you guys. Uh, up, up first is this nice 1923 uh, Walking Liberty, I'm sorry, Peace Dollar. Uh, we bought this one in a pair with this, uh, this Buffalo Nickel here. I thought the Buffalo Nickel was pretty cool just because 
I don't know, I didn't see too many distracting spots on it. Luster was really nice, but you can see right there in the weak cheek, that's kind of the downer for this coin. Still pretty nice. And uh, yeah, can't go wrong with a few uh, rattler holders. Bought a few uh, more rattler holders today. This is a 1943S. Um, uh, Mercury Dime, sorry, I'm just missing a few things today. But this one has some pretty nice luster. Not a lot of problems either. I was wanting to double check and see if this one might be able to be, you know, a cat candidate, possibly gold cat candidate. But there might be some kind of distracting spots or uh, normally you run into some PVC or kind of milky spots that would take away from the grade. But this one looks pretty nice. Another one with a little bit of color here is this nice 1944S, great MS65 by PCGS. When you take a look at this one and kind of angle it down a little bit, there's kind of some really big heavy spots here. Not sure if that's uh, PVC or not, but really want to check and see on these Mercs because the ones that are the most easiest to gold cack um, are Mercury Dimes from what I can see and understand about the market. And so double check your Mercury Dimes, especially in older holders, you probably can run into something that is gold cack worthy, um, but it does take a lot of time, a lot of practice, and a lot of understanding that we're still trying to get equipped to. Here's one of the coolest buys of the week for us, just because it's a little bit of a tougher coin to find. It's the 1893O Barber Quarter, graded MS63 by PCGS. I think there's less than 500 of these graded at PCGS, and uh, I saw this coin, I think the last sold comp of this coin was around $460 a few years ago. And uh, the dealer had it priced for about 500 bucks. I thought that was super fair, especially when the times that we're in right now and the, the coin market where it is. And so I uh, ended up buying this one. Got this one for Trent because, you know, deals like that sometimes are just so hard to, uh, you know, you got to time them right. You got to buy it as soon as possible. And I uh, hope Trent enjoys that one, especially for, you know, just his, his set is really prestigious in my mind. And uh, he's really going to like that one. Bought this 1875 uh, AU50 uh, seated half dollar today. Uh, kind of an old, clean look to it, but bought it for a nice, affordable price. Uh, it is market acceptable, but nothing I would really send a CAC. Uh, you know, buying something like this though, uh, kind of a mid to high grade type of half for around 200 bucks is not too bad. You not only want to go for something that's a little bit more original, but sometimes you just need to fill it for the set, and uh, that's completely understandable. Bought two more collector grade uh, Mercury Dimes. So we sold two recently that were cacked, but these ones really were nice as well. And so we ended up going to buy these. These just really have some strong luster, really nice fields. Nothing that would really, like I said, there's no distractions on these coins in terms of its luster and uh, the spotting that you would normally see. Um, I might check these ones as well for CAC if stuff is just sitting around by the time uh, they open back up in July. That might be something for us to consider, especially with a lot of the coins that we're running into. A lot of them sometimes might be undergraded, and uh, we normally go through the inventory before we send some stuff in uh, to CAC for other people. Uh, 1942D uh, Mercury Dime. This one has a little bit of chatter in the fields, a little bit hard to see, especially with you know, what I'm trying to display here. But uh, another nice coin, didn't like, it, you know, didn't want it to have any spots, and most 67s really are going to be problem free and uh, really nice to look at those are really awesome bought a few key, key date or morgan dollars this week some that are really remarkable 289 cc's we ended up selling this one but this one's still available but it's just the more expensive one of course just because it's that mid-tier grade uh, this one's xf40 uh, it has a little bit of cleaning on it but it's overall really original take a look at the reverse it's still pretty nice as well a little bit of underlying luster, but most of it's gone for sure. And uh, a pre a kind of a hefty price tag on this coin, just because it's one of the hardest CCs to find, um, it, especially when it's not in this, when it's a little bit above this grade. I can find a whole bunch of them that are in fine 12 or VF, but finding ones in XF are a little bit tough. But understanding, uh, you know, the coin market and who you're working with, if you don't have someone that's going to buy this off the bat, sometimes you might be sitting on it, even though if you got it for a great price, just because. Uh, if uh, you know a dealer's not willing to shell out for almost four thousand dollars for a coin, you have to find a collector that will, and so sometimes it's a little bit tough. And the next coin I want to show you guys is another tough CC. This is seventy nine CC, graded AU fifty. This one is not the cap die variety, as you can tell right there. Really full uh, CCs right there. Now luster is still pretty nice in this coin. It's just a little beat up. And the holder is a little beat up as well. A few distracting spots in the fields, but it is an AU coin, something to be expected. It did have its run um, through the public a little bit, 
before it was uh, you know sent to PCGS or kept back for a collection. Got another tough CC here today, just running through some CCs. This one has a little bit of old cleaning on it, and uh, but they still made it market acceptable just based on probably the low grade that it had. They net graded this one down, but I think this one's still a nice affordable price. Um, it is great VF25, like I said. Are you guys enjoying today's video so far? If you are, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts about the tip that we gave, but also, uh, you know, just what's your opinion about it? I think it's very important that we hear from you guys. Make sure to subscribe because, uh, you know, it's one of the best coin communities on YouTube, on Instagram, anywhere, let's be honest. I'm will brag, but let's get back to today's video. Uh, you know, can't go wrong with going uh, going for CCs. A lot of these we were offered at under gray sheet, and so if we can make a buck and move them at gray sheet, we will. I think we have this one $100 over gray sheet, this one $100 over gray sheet, and this one I think we'll have 10 or $20 over gray sheet. So something if you want for your collection and you're not breaking the bank doing so. Bought something this week that we normally don't buy just because we're trying to avoid coins like this. We don't want to buy common date 83 O's. We felt this one was a strong gold cat candidate. Um, a strike overall is, is pretty nice, especially for a New Orleans mint. There is a little bit of a weakness here, but if you look at the uh, the breast feathers, they're still pretty nice on here. And uh, we're hoping this one gold cacks, and we're going to see if it does or not. If not, you know, we lose 20 bucks or 10 bucks, whatever it's got to be. But um, we felt like that one was a strong enough coin to present uh, to CAC to see what they think. This is one of my favorite commemorative designs, as you guys know. This is the California. Really nice, strong luster on this coin. Uploaded this one a few days ago to our website, AkushaCollectibles.com. And we ended up buying this one and one that's toned. And the reason being is because we want one that, you know, is really presentable to someone that doesn't like toning, but also someone that might like toning. This one has kind of a splash of color on the obverse of the coin. And uh, for me, it was, it was kind of nice enough to spend a little bit more extra money on as a premium. Just don't find many of these toned. And... Uh, can't pass this one up when it has that really nice character in the Liberty there. Um, brought some really nice, I don't think they're undergraded, but they're really flashy old holders here. This is an 1879S Morgan Dollar. This one is graded MS63 by PCGS. I think that's enough to call it a really nice 63. Not sure about a, a you know a gold CAC, kind of a 64 CAC in, in people's eyes. Really flashy. I think this one is kind of semi-proof like. There was five to choose from, and they're all consecutive cert numbers, but these were the best out of the out of the five. The other ones were really kind of ugly and unattractive. Probably should have bought all five because, like I said, they were consecutive certs. This one has a really nice clean cheek, but there is some stuff out in the field. I think this one's the better contender to be a gold cack out of the two. So might consider these just to set them back and let CC do their magic. We'll see what they think about those. Bought some, you know, GSA Morgans. These have been, they almost went to like a high peak of some for 375, 400, and they kind of tapered back down to about 350, 340. And so we ended up buying a few of them just because they were nice and affordable. Bought uh, two Carson Cities here as well. I mean, just nice quality coins. Not going to be asking too much for these just because, you know, there's a lot of them out there, but not, none of them for the, the price that we have them, which is nice. Got a few uh, Carson Cities um, like we've been showing off, but this one's kind of the lowest grade that we bought. 90 CC, and we bought that one for like 100 bucks, which I didn't think that was too bad. I do agree with the fine grade on this piece, and uh, we probably have a buyer for this one. A lot of these we sometimes run into people that just say, hey, I got a client you know, from a different dealer that's looking for a bunch of circulated CCs, and we end up moving those. And... Uh, because sometimes it just doesn't work out for us as something we can put on our page. Uh, this is a 1909S Lincoln Cent. Not too sure on the grade of this coin. It does have some kind of uh, toning to it. I'm not too sure. Um, really nice strong S down there and details on the reverse. I like this coin. Um, I try to buy Indian head cents that you know are either really affordable or coins that you know people are looking for and they don't find very often. That 1909S really fit the mold. Here is a kind of an AU Barber half that we bought today, 1909. Just nice luster on the coin. I really like the reverse more than the obverse. Um, but yeah, I do love those a lot. Maybe Trent will pick those up, not too sure. Uh, but we're trying to get more Barber stuff in that he might pass on. So make sure to keep checking on the website for, uh, for uh, more stuff like that. Uh, 1916 Barber Quarter. 
This one's the Denver Mint. I really like the reverse. Like I said, most of the time it just is stronger in terms of its strike and less stuff really happened to it. Um, as you can see, there's just not much wear on the reverse other than that shield. But still, pretty nice, phenomenal coin. Bought a few other strong coins this week. 79cc, 81cc. We won't want to take up too much time uh, of yours, but if you guys want to check on these, the images are on AkushaCollectibles.com. Here's a coin that we're very happy to show off. It's the 1876 uh, Cedar Quarter. This one's a graded proof, 64 Cameo by NGC. You can really check out that Cameo there. Just really lovely. Really like the white background in the, you know, in the marble. And uh, yeah, this one's really, really beautiful. Bought this one because it really screened collector to me. We bought it for kind of a premium, but I just don't see many of these uh, that often. I think the sold comps in these are a few years apart from um, from today, and so had someone offer it. They had to do some repairs on their home, and we ended up buying it. It was just a really cool coin. Um, one of my favorite type of varieties um, to pick up, this is the 1888 Top 100 uh, Double Die Obverse Hot Lips. As you can see, there's kind of a doubling right here by the lips on the, on the Morgan. That really is what I enjoy. Try to take close-ups uh, for you guys to take a look at when you head over to our site, but I really like these. I think that these are gonna become more and more collectible over time. Just something that makes the coin unique, something that makes it interesting. One day I hope to have one of these in maybe like a, in a rattler holder in mint state condition. That's gonna be very tough to find, but it would be really awesome to have. One of the most colorful coins of today's video is this 1945 Walking Liberty Half. Full obverse color, really nice rim toning, and kind of fills in with a little pink. We take a look at the reverse, got that, that uh, you know, overshadow to the left of the coin, hugging that rim, and the rest is kind of like a gold uh, patina to it. I think it's a pretty nice coin. It was really kind of beat up. Need to kind of see if I'd wipe this off and get this $80 off of here. But uh, someone's been asking about Tone Walkers, and we'll be putting that up on our website for you guys to take a look at. The last two coins we want to show you are some cap bus type of stuff. This is a 1838 a Capos Quarter. I bought this one because it was nice and original and uh, just screamed Americana to me and we hope you think so as well. Bought a little bit of a tougher um, 1820 Capos Dime. This one is the small zero variety I believe and uh, I don't run into these that often and they sell pretty high and so um, it's just something that I wanted to pick up on and understand a little bit more and take a risk on it. Someone ended up picking this one up recently, so very happy about that. Um, trying to move more into the cap bust area. Uh, only have a really a few pieces to choose from on our website, but we hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video. Let's roll it to the outro. Did you guys enjoy today's video? If you guys did, please leave a like. We want to offer you guys tips that help you get into the coin space, but also just you know kind of stimulate you and get you excited about thinking about coins or thinking about the coin business and comment your thoughts down below about the coins to the tip that we had for you today have you experienced this in the past all of that would be important anything you want to add that would be great too subscribe if you're new and uh, yeah we'll see you guys in the next video we just hit 2600 subscribers i believe so that's pretty awesome